Hello and welcome to teleportme.com. I'm Matt and today I am going to do a review on something new and exciting. Okay, so you're a photographer and what is the most exciting thing that you can get in the mail or go to the store and purchase? Yes, a camera. I absolutely love buying a new camera to just reach into this new camera, this new technology and just see what it can do and push it to its limits. It's just so exciting. It's so fun and I love it more than almost anything in the world. So today I want to review something new and exciting for me at least is the Tricio Lite 2. This 360 camera is by far my all time favorite. And I have used, gosh, um, dozens of different 360 cameras out there, and none of them really fell into place where I wanted them to be. They either had low photo quality or they had a big like workflow that you had to do in, in post-production, which is never fun because being a business owner and doing this professionally, I want my workflow my post to be as minimal as possible. And that's very important because that time is time away from your family, uh, time away from yourself, and it costs money in the long run. So when I saw this Tricio, I decided that I had to get one and I had to try it out for myself. And I have to tell you, I am very impressed. My post-production is so minimal, it's so quick, and it's so easy. And we're gonna go over that today. But first, let's take a look at this. So when you first get into the Tricio, when you first pull it out of the box, it's gonna come already in this soft case here. And if you open it, you'll see that they actually made a very nice case for this. That actually protects the Tricio very, very well. Um, and there's really not a whole lot to it. It's actually a, a, a there's it's actually a pretty lightweight uh, camera. So first thing, of course, you're going to notice is the camera itself. And as you can see here, the camera uh, it says Tricio in the front, 8K, and you have kind of the sardine can design on the back, which is kind of cool. Kind of like that. Um, it's very lightweight. I, I would say it's not very heavy. It probably weighs, oh, I would say probably pretty close to like the Insta360 1X2. Um, probably like a, a Z1 weight. And that's because there's a motor down here. Um, yeah. But top of that you get this little guy here saying Tricio light for business and they give you the instructions and a little terry cloth chamois for cleaning off the lens you get USB-C cable and you get this little thing. So you might be wondering, what the hell is this? Well, what this is, this actually will go on to um, your tripod, your monopod, or your light stand. And then this attaches. And they're just like that. Now, you can take the button here, and you can press that, and it releases. So it sits on there just like so. And if you listen, you can hear that the, the motor, the electric motor inside there moving. And it actually is a pretty, feels like a pretty solid motor. Um, it's got decent resistance, decent flowing. It doesn't, doesn't like skip or anything like that. Um, and it, it does a wonderful job. So 
Let's go ahead and turn this on. Battery high. Now you can use this as standalone without having to use your cellular phone. And pretty much what you do, you just turn it on and you can press the photo button. And I'm going to press it now. And this is how it works. And there you go. It just took four photos. It just created a 360 degree panel right there. Now, depending on the lighting and depending on the, the, the color of everything, it generally can go a little bit faster than that. But this is dark, this is dark. That's why it took a little bit longer here because it was exposing more. Now, the nice thing about this is that it does HDR photos internally. And it exposes for Windows and the internal, uh, like for instance, if we're in a house, it will expose for both of them properly using HDR. Now, there are other cameras out there that use HDR, of course, like you have, for instance, the Theta Z1. Now, the Theta Z1 is a fantastic camera, but in order to get those windows to look good and everything like that, you have to merge everything and do a little bit in post-production to get it right and you actually should use or have to use a uh, a plugin that you install into the camera called dual fisheye well this does that for you this does a really really good HDR the software that they have on here the algorithm that they use for for the photos is designed specifically for making virtual tours so when they designed this and they wrote the software to process the HDR photos, they put in mind, they put Windows as one of the key features to this camera. So when you actually do a virtual tour with this or you take capture some photos, you're going to see that Windows are actually exposed very, very well without having to do anything at all. And the interior is actually exposed very, very well as well. And it does a very good job with white balance, which is pretty impressive how well it does doing white balance. Um, so we're going to go over that here in just a moment. And I'm going to show you examples from this camera being used. Now, a couple things I do want to go over, um, and I want to get these out of the way. And that's kind of the cons. So there really isn't any huge cons with this. It's more of, I would say my, my biggest pet peeve is something that can be fixed in firmware. I would assume it could be fixed in firmware. And that's auto leveling. This does not have auto leveling. Uh, so if you're not leveled, perfectly leveled, you are going to have a uh, uneven panel, which can easily be fixed in post. And that's that's kind of a, a big thing for me. I, I like to not have to do that, but I know that that is something that can be fixed later on with a firmware update. Now, one thing that I did kind of do to, I would say, take care of the leveling issue is I printed on my 3D printer this little guy here. Now, somebody posted this uh, on a Facebook group. I, I can't remember, and, and I apologize to the, the, the creator of this. I, I don't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, if, you go to, if you do have a 3D printer, you can go to Thingiverse, and you just type in Tricio, and this will pull up. So pretty much what this is is a cover that will go over the Tricio, 
and it will protect the lens here on this side. And when you're ready to shoot, you flip it around. And this right here is a bubble level that I purchased uh, on Amazon. I think I got like six of them for like four bucks. And it has a double-sided tape on the base of it. And you just stick it in there. And this would allow you to go through and level this off for every shot using your tripod. And then you don't have that issue anymore. Uh, another problem that I find with this is they only send you one of these. You only get one of these in, in, in the package. And I wish they gave you like two of them. And then I also wish that there was an easy way to purchase these. Now these are made of plastic. So they're not the most rugged. Uh, there's some metal inter internals on it, but for the most part on the outside, this is all plastic and it's just gonna wear down eventually and loosen up possibly from constantly putting this on and taking it off. And you're gonna get probably uh, some slack inside this, this coupler here. And I, I wish they just gave a couple of these or at least made it easy to purchase these. Um, that That's probably my absolute biggest pet peeve is this right here. Truth be told, I, I think they could probably even just really just alleviate all this issue and this and just simply put that into the base here and just build it right into the camera instead of having to use this thing. That would be my my issue. But, you know, for the most part, I, I've used this on many jobs now over the past month and I haven't had a single issue with it. So it, it's fine for right now, but I can just see that in, a, in the future that there might be an issue with that. Just something to keep in mind. Um, also, keep in mind too that this is a stress point, and this is probably the weakest point of the camera, is right right in here. Um, so you don't want to, you want to be careful not to wrench on this, because for the most part, this is just a shaft coming down into the center here that's screwed onto this base, and you don't want to, you want to be careful not to drop it for the most part, but that goes for any 360 camera that's out there. The last thing you want to do ever is drop it. But I could see where this could be an issue of breaking a shaft or or something or even this breaking here, the, the, the coupler or the, the, the mount. Um, so just, you know, as you would do any camera out there, just keep a look at, just keep an eye out on this and just be cautious. That's all. Other than that, it's absolutely perfect. And I wouldn't complain about any of this normally at all. Okay, so when using this, the app is actually pretty simple, pretty intuitive. It's really an easy thing to do. So we're going to take this and I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi of it. There it is, Tricio. We go we're connected and you're gonna see right here it's gonna say connected right on the main screen then you go ahead and you click on the camera button and here we go they're gonna give you a nice little display of what the camera is currently seeing now if you look here it's gonna say select album and name a photo so in here, let's go ahead and just create a new one. Let's just call it tutorial. And hit yes. Name exists. Okay, let's just call it tutorial one and hit yes. Okay, so now it's going to create a folder called tutorial one, where it's going to keep all those photos in that, that photo or in that folder in a sense. Now, when you're going around and you're, you're doing panos, you can name them and they have already some default tags some presets already put in there for names so like kitchen home um, bedroom living room you name it they have that in there already which is nice but here is a downfall or possibly like a, a glitch to the and i wouldn't call it a glitch it's just something in the software 
um, and I found this out the hard way. Thankfully, I had backups. Now, I was doing bedrooms and bathrooms at, at, a, at a, a house that I was shooting, and I was just hitting bathroom each time and bedroom each time, and it would overwrite the previous one. So, at the end of the day, when I got home, I looked at my photos on here, and it just so happened that there was only one bedroom and only one bathroom in there, even though there was five bedrooms and three bathrooms, it overwrote it. So, keep that in mind when you're using this. The first one, choose bedroom right off of the, the default tag, but after that, you're gonna have to turn around and add it in there under a custom name. So as you can see here, we got custom, you hit that and you can put um, bedroom one, if I could spell, bedroom one, hit yes, and now this is now currently named bedroom one. Even though I'm not in a bedroom clearly, but for this example, that's what we're gonna do. Um, over here, you have the camera settings, storage, the timer. Uh, you can set your Nader logo here, so you can actually pick a, a, a logo, like for instance, the Tricio one, or no logo at all. Um, I don't put a logo on there, I just remove it later on, but if you wanna put a logo in here, you can simply add a logo to it. Uh, camera sound, uh, so it turns off any kind of sound that the camera makes. Personally, I like the sound. It tells me that it's done. Um, let's see, any scene. So any scene is pretty much the, the software that's involved with uh, getting the overexposure and the underexposure and getting everything to look the way that it should look. Now, that's what makes this camera so good, is any scene. And I would recommend having that on at all times. In a sense, I think it's probably just HDR, and their way of processing the HDR is actually pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, over here, you have your photo gallery. So now this is going to automatically go into tutorial one because I just created that folder, and that's going to show you what photos you have in there. You can go over into management, and you can kind of move around your photos at that point but we don't have any photos in there right now so we're not going to bother that now to take a photo you just simply press the red button here and it's going to go around and right now it's it's pretty much just metering for exposure and then it's going to go through and it's going to take its 360 panel and as you see, it shows you a preview of each photo as it goes around. And then it gives you a nice little tone as soon as it's done. And then it's going to go through and process it. It's going to stitch it, which... I don't know, it takes about 30 seconds to stitch the panel, if that. So generally, by the time you you pick the camera up and you move to another, another position, it's going to be done and ready for you. Now, once that's done, it saves it. And you can actually go in there and view what it's going to look like. And they show it to you in 360. And, ooh, look at my head. <laughs> okay. Um, so now if you look at the windows here and here, you can see that it actually exposed pretty well for those windows. You're not going to find a whole lot of, of these 360 cameras that are going to automatically expose those windows in that way, especially when you have a bright light right there coming right down on it, and it's actually pretty bright in this area. Um, it did a damn good job, and it's actually very bright outside right now, too. It's sunny, uh, it's summer, and it's a very bright day out. So that would take very, 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 very little. If this window is, is not good enough for you, it would take very little work to make that window look even better. And that's just playing with the color, with the exposure, like the highlights. You can bring highlight down just a little bit, and that would make that window look all that much better. And it wouldn't take long at all. It would take a matter of seconds.
And as you can see, the resolution of it is 8,000 by 4,000. And then you can change up these settings here and get it in some different looks, different views. But for the most part, what we're interested in is 360. And as you can see, I mean, the quality of it is pretty damn good. I mean, this is straight out of the camera. This is no, no editing whatsoever. Nothing was done to this. And the, the, just the, the quality of it is fantastic. All right. And that's, that's pretty much how to take a pano, how to take a photo with it. And then you just keep moving on. You just keep going and going and going. And that's it. I mean, there's really nothing, nothing to this app other than that. Now, one cool thing is, uh, and I said it before, if you are an Apple user, it just saved that photo in my gallery on my phone. And I have a, I run Mac for everything. So by the time I get to my office, that photo is already going to be on my my Mac at home. And it's probably actually, right now it's probably on my computer already as we speak. And then I can take that photo and just drag and drop it into a new folder and then I can edit. Okay, so like I said, these photos automatically from the Tricio to, the, to my phone automatically get updated in my photo gallery on my Mac. So all you really have to do is just grab one of these, drag and drop it into a folder, and there it is. So you don't even have to copy it from the Tricio itself and you by and use the app. Here it is. It's just right here. It's ready to roll. So I'm going to open this up in FSP Viewer just to show you. And as you can see, everything's done. This is from a this is from a, a shoot that I did the other day. And as you notice, you could probably see it right now. Uh, my verticals and horizontals are are not very lined up. They're not straight. But this is straight out of the camera. There is no editing done to this whatsoever. This is how it looks straight out of the camera. And here I have it open and I have my camera connected to my computer. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to choose where I want it to save at, which is right here. And we're going to stitch something. So we're going to direct it to here, which is the Tricio. And we're going to grab one of these photos. Now, I don't know which is which, so I'm just going to grab one here. Let's just go with one of my later ones. There we go. Let's just grab that one there. So now it's going to go through and it's actually going to stitch it on the computer versus in the camera. Um, I haven't really seen much of a difference between the two. Some people I read say that it's better to stitch it on the, on the computer than it is to stitch it uh, internally on the camera. I honestly, I, I, I don't see the difference at all. To me, this is just an extra step that really isn't necessarily needed. So it's going to create a folder here called Stitch Pictures. And this is at 2840 Sunset, as you notice, because that's what I have uh, on the, the camera. I put the address in there, so it automatically puts it into a directory. And let's see, what photo is this? Okay. So I'm going to grab the same thing from... My photo gallery here. Let's see, it's the room with, there it is. And I'm gonna drag that into here. I'm gonna hit get info on it. So this is 5.2 megabits. It is, uh, the size of it is, where is it? Okay, 8,000 by 4,000. And if we go over here and we look this one um this one does seem to be a little bit bigger so we're going to take a look at that and just see they're both at eight thousand by four thousand 
both registering as the same exact same thing here. Uh, this one actually has a GPS location in it. That's interesting. This one does not. But if we compare them side by side, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference between them. So let's see. So let's look at the window. Okay, so this one here that we're looking at is actually was just saved uh, to my photo gallery. And this one I pulled off of the camera itself. Exposures look the same. I don't see anything different with exposures. Um, let's look at detail. So let's zoom in on these books here. I truthfully can say I don't see much of a difference. This one is, there we go. Uh, I don't see a difference at all. So I, I'm not sure what, what people are talking about, how it's better to pull it off of uh, the camera directly through the app than it is to get it from your phone. So there you have it. You know, this is a darker area of the room. I'm not seeing any noise at all in these photos are very, 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 very little, but they're both comparable. Um, I would say maybe, maybe this one here, which is, this is the one off of the, uh, off the, off of the, uh, photo gallery. might be a little sharper in a sense doesn't necessarily mean it's better because it's sharper it just means that there's a little bit more sharpness to it by looking at that bolt there um so yeah i mean it's very very comparable i would never tell the difference in a 360 uh virtual tour between the two of them so for me it's just so much easier just to grab them out of my photo gallery and be done and then from there i would simply just go in and do a uh removal of the nader or of the tripod using Affinity Photo. And then I would upload it into teleportme.com and create a virtual tour. Okay, thank you for watching this review of the Tricio Lite 2. I would have to say for the, the quality of it, the performance of it, the ease of use, the lack of, uh, I would say, post-production, not necessarily the lack of, but how limited that your post-production really is needed with this camera. And especially for the price, it's a definite purchase. And it will make any virtual tour look fantastic. Now, I do have a virtual tour linked in the comments below that you can go and look at. This virtual tour happens to be put up there with very, very little editing at all. The only thing that I did to these panels for this virtual tour is I removed the tripod and I ran it through Sharpen AI just to sharpen it up just a little bit as I do with every single pano regardless of the camera I always run Sharpen AI on every single one of them. I did not adjust uh, any kind of color I didn't touch any kind of exposure on this simply remove the nader and run it through a little sharpening that's it well thank you for watching this and I will see you next time